Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. Switch Cube Advanced Gaming here, and we are here to talk about our first game featured on Should You Buy, the weekly show. Every Tuesday, we will spotlight a random game and tell you guys, should you buy it? We really hope you like this one. This is our first weekly series, so let's dive in. Escapist 2. This did recently come out on the eShop for $20, um, and it really has a fun graphical style. That is the first thing that pops out. The game overall is a co-op game, co-op based. You can play it solo, but it is more enjoyed with friends. Um, you play it, usually online or local co-op with your friends, and you are put into a prison scenario, and you have to gather resources, craft resources, improve your stats, get a job, make money, and try to escape the prison in some way. So the first question is, how does the game run? Whenever you're playing a game, biggest thing is how does it run? Before art style, before actual gameplay, it's how does this game run? And I can say both handheld and docked with complete confidence, it runs like butter. It never has any kind of frame drops, never any issues. The first time you load up does take a little bit longer, but after that it loads just fine. And it is just a fantastic game in general. First thing to note about this game is the graphical style. Um, at first, I was not really, not really feeling the graphical style. Um, it didn't seem that appealing to me, and it was like, okay, it's just another, another pixel art game, just like any other. But then my friend said, hey, we should play this game. So I said, okay, why not? You get into it, and there's so much more. There's so much deep customization with your characters. You can customize every inmate, every guard that's in the game, and it's just fantastic. It looks good. The animations are cool. There's funny little witty lines that the guards will say. It all just comes together, and it's beautiful. Now for a con. Now, this is a personal con. You might like this, and if you do, good for you. That More for you, I guess. And that is there's time-based levels. Most of the prisons, you go in, you find the items, you get with your buddies, and you escape together. However many days you take, sure, if you take longer, your score will go down. But in the end, all that matters is you escape. But there are a, a select few of time-based levels. Now, this is just a con for me. You may love this. But personally, I like it where I'm just kind of free to do it at my own pace. I don't have to rush and find the escape route within a certain amount of time. But, like I said, that is personal preference, and you may enjoy that more. A little bit of an extra challenge. Um, like I mentioned before, the witty lines from guards are really a big part of the game. You just see little funny things that they say. Um, even prisoners will say funny things just randomly. And it really just kind of makes the game that much more charming and fun and enjoyable. Next is the arrow guide. Um, Overall, it is a great indicator of where you need to go. There are times where it is a little confusing. If it's like pointed parallel to another staircase or door, you walk in the wrong place. But nine out of ten times, it works just fine. But from there, there is a glitch with the arrow guide, one that you should know about because if you don't know the layout of the prison, it can affect if you make it to your routine. Um, and that is the job time arrow glitch. In the game, you can get jobs. You can talk to people, get jobs, and do your job and fill a quota and make money in the prison. One downside is if you get a specific job, sometimes your arrow will always be pointing to that location and never actually guide you to the next routine. This can be fixed with just a quick reset of the game, and in most cases, after I've reset the game, I don't see the glitch reappear, so that's fine. And, you know, that's all fine and dandy. Next is a slight problem that I did occur. I no longer occur it except for one instance, and that is game crashes. Game crashes can take a great play session and just stop it in its tracks. And that's really, you know, quite sad um, because, you know, if you're really close to escaping this prison and then, oh, software closed, it can really toss a wrench in the whole experience. It used to occur at least once during a play session. Now, recently, I don't know if they've actually patched it or if that was just my system freaking out on me. But I've only occurred it when I try to switch 
from one online game to another. I've never, I haven't experienced it during normal gameplay anymore. Only when I tried to go from one online server game to another. So in the end, it really didn't affect the gameplay that much. But if that problem does still exist, it may just kind of take that with some understanding. Next is obviously the gameplay. How is the gameplay? Gameplay is very important when you are playing a game like this, and it is phenomenal. Um, mixed with the art style and the witty lines, you get a set routine each day. You have to wake up, go to roll call, maybe go eat breakfast or do your job. Then you can exercise, shower, and you have to follow these routines with little chunks of free time. You can use free time to monitor guard patterns or just learn the layout of the prison or find other ways to make money by doing little favors with uh, four other prisoners. Playing with friends is the much better play style of this game, so if you don't really have as many friends to play online or locally with, this may not be the game for you. It is still very fun solo, but really it does shine um, in the online. You can do public games online, so that is also an option. It is a decent mode. Obviously, there is not as much communication that is present when you play online with strangers because all you have is like a quick chat. Um, so it can get a little interesting, but nonetheless is very fun, and sometimes that actually makes it more fun because it gives you an extra challenge to play with. Next, an interesting category to talk about with video games, but that is sound, music, sound effects, anything in that realm, and this game has no shortage of it. The music is fun, playful, simplistic, yet beautiful. The sound effects are fun, interesting, vibrant, great variety. It just, you know, once again, mixed with that visual art style, it comes together beautifully. So for the final rating of this game, if I were to give this a score out of 10, I would give it a solid 8.5. Yes, that is right, guys. Aside from the infrequent crashes, aside from the arrow glitch, it is a fantastic game. It runs beautifully on Switch. There's neat little lighting effects that just bring it all together. Little sound bites, everything comes together in a fantastic online local co-op game. There is a versus mode you can play. Personally, I don't prefer it, but I know a lot of people do like it. It is a fantastic game. It is $20 on the eShop. A great purchase. Definitely deserves its spot on the bestsellers list. And I definitely think you should, in fact, buy this game. So that is the first episode of Should You Buy. Really hope you guys like this one. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're going to pick up the game, be sure to comment that down below. And tell me what other guys, and tell me what other games you guys like. If you'd like to see a certain game featured on this list, like a game you've been thinking about buying and you'd like to see us cover it, be sure to comment that down below and we will cover it for you in future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the very first episode of Should You Buy Escapist 2. Definitely worth the small $20 price point that they ask. And that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. If there's any games you want us to cover, comment that down below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.